In this tutorial we're going to look at creating particle systems in Unity 3D. So I've set up a basic uh, scenery here. Now what we're going to do in game object, create other particle system. Now this will give us a default particle system and you can see it's been added here and it's called particle system. Now as you add more of those you'll want to change the name. When you've clicked on the particle system you'll notice that it actually runs even though the game isn't running uh, which is a good way to test that you've got it looking the way you want it to in both the scene and the game view. So these are all the default particles and their settings. What I'm going to do in this session is just look through the particle emitter part uh, of Unity 3D. So first of all there's an emit button if you turn that off, the particle emitter will stop emitting. And you can turn it on again. Usually it defaults to on. When you might want it to be off initially is when you're creating an explosion that happens after a certain event. So that in your game you can trigger it to become on. Now this minimum and maximum size here is for each particle. Now they're both the same, which means every particle will be the same size. If we change this to 2 and 0.2, some will be 0.2 and some will be 0.1. You can see here. And if we change this to 5, some will be 0.1, some will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0.5. So determines a random value for each particle between that range. It also does the same with the next settings which are energy and energy is the number of seconds that a particle lives for. At the moment they all live for three seconds each. Now we can change them so they live for one second and that makes it look a lot more active or for a longer range of time. Some will disappear after one second and some will disappear after ten and randomly within that range. If you put these values up quite high and make the size a bit bigger, if we click off of it in game view so you can actually see what's happening is you kind of get a glowing plasmary ball effect and if we go back and change this down to two one and three you can get that sort of an effect so you can create all different things uh, just by modifying those values. Now the next part of the emitter is the um, minimum emission and maximum emission values. A particle emitter emits a certain number of particles which are set within here at any one time. Now this is allowing it to emit 50. We can emit between say 10 and 200 and you'll notice the difference in the system here. If we put this up to 100 and that to 500 you get a lot more particles. Now each particle has to be processed by the game engine and by your computer. So the more particles you have the um, more processing your computer will need to do. So you might actually not need a hundred particles, it depends on what you're creating, what the effect will be. Okay, so the next part of the particle emitter is this world velocity setting and what it does is sets the uh, movement of the particles as they come out of the particle emitter. So if you imagine the particle emitter as a hose spraying water then this world velocity is the way that they're going to come out of the hose. If we want them to go directly up, we could put in a 1 here. 
and you'll now see that as they are created or spawned they start to move up. If we set that to 10 they go faster. Uh, now this is the local velocity of each um, particle. The particles when they come out of the emitter are sort of going in a particular direction based on um, their local orientation and as you can see here if we set it to go along the X in local they're all going to go along X here so in this case our world and our local velocities are the same pointing in the same direction as you can see from here. Now if we were to uh, rotate this particle emitter you can now see that they're going along X in local which is this way uh, but not X in the world which is that way. If you want them to go in the world X then you would change that to 1 and that back to 0 there and now they're ignoring their own coordinates their local coordinates. Okay so the next velocity is random velocity. Random velocity is added obviously randomly to each particle. If we set that x to 1 then it is randomly added a x value and as you can see here the particles are moving along the x axis. At, uh, some are going in positive x and some are going in minus x. If we change all of these down to 1 we will now get a particle system that spits out particles in all directions. So we just zoom out a little bit more, go into the game view and have a look. This is what you're getting here. Now this uh, next part, the emitter velocity scale, is a velocity that you add to the particles based on the emitter's velocity. If we move this particle system around, you can see that the particles that are created here just do their own thing and so they don't take on the velocity of the emitter itself. Right now uh, what I've done is add a cube that you can see here on to the particle system and positioned it at 0, 0, 0 so that it's right in the center. Now I need that to illustrate where the particles are going as the cube is um, moving or the emitter is moving I should say in order to illustrate this um, emitter velocity scale. So if we set that to uh, 0 and what I've also done is I've added a constant up force here to the particle emitter so that it moves automatically for us when we run it and that will help us see how this emitter velocity scale works. So let's just run this. Now watch as the emitter is moving up the particles keep coming out of it but particles from before don't move with it. If you want the particles to move with the emitter so that it looks like they've taken on the velocity of the emitter then you need to add part of it. So here we've put in 10, now let's move. Watch as the particles that are coming out also get the velocity of the emitter added to them. Now another setting that relates to this part here is this simulate in world space. When it's ticked the particles will follow the emitter. When it's not ticked they won't. So let's untick that and run it again. So the particles these particles as you can see did not take any notice to the movement of the emitter but new particles did come from the location of it.